let's get started then. I think, I think people have stopped milling about. So um, cool, thanks for coming. I'm excited to be here. So my name is Chung, um, and we're gonna talk about columnar formats for AI. This is not a uh, topic that, the two, two things that usually go together. Um, curious, you know, since there are only a few of you guys, like, uh, have you guys all have like heard of or worked with Parquet and just columnar formats in general? Okay, everyone? All right, and then uh, who, has, has anyone not used ChatGPT at this point? <laughs> okay, cool. All right, um, so really quickly about myself. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of LandCB, which is the company behind the open source Lands columnar format. Um, and I've been making data science and machine learning tooling for almost two decades at this point. Uh, once upon a time, I was one of the original co-authors of the Pandas library. So if you're familiar with data tools, you probably um, used import Pandas as PD. Um, and uh, most recently, I was VP of engineering at 2B TV, where I focused on recommender systems and ML ops, and that was sort of what motivated me to uh, get on this path of creating this new um, columnar format, right? And um, the thing that I noticed at uh, Tubi, and uh, my co-founder was working at Cruise at the same time, was that uh, Parquet and Auric and really existing data formats, they're not a good fit for AI, right? So of course, Parquet um, is about 10 years old at this time, and it's done great for like analytics and just managing tabular data and working with those analytical uh, capabilities. But for machine learning and AI, uh, we now have lots of things that are different. Right? The, the data is very different. The workloads are very different. Um, and in, in the 10 years since the inception of Parquet, uh, storage technologies have progressed a lot as well. Right? So, um, the question that we have to ask is, what does this mean? And uh, you know, can we build on top of Parquet, or do we ne really need a new format? So first off, uh, the data is, has become really different, right? So the data has become much bigger. So from like a floating point numbers or integers, we now have you know, embeddings, long form text, images, videos, point clouds, so on and so forth. They've, all, they've also become much more nested, or schemas have become more nested. So uh, in a single metadata column, you, that, that might combine, like for an image, you might have you know, the different patches within that image, and then you have bounding boxes for each patch, uh, labels for that bounding box, and then object uh, identifiers, and so on and so forth. And finally, tables for machine learning have also become a lot wider. So it's not uncommon to just have hundreds or even thousands of columns that are you know, all features for your model uh, or, or something like that, right? Um, and workloads are also very different, right? So analytical use cases really focuses on scans. You're, you're scanning a column to do filtering and then you're scanning the other columns to do projections and you return uh, a subset of your data. Now, AI um, needs random access as well for training, for vector search, for uh, exploratory data analysis, active learning, um, the list goes on. Right, so we're moving from this world of you know, BI into AI, and Parquet and, and ORC, by design, does not really support good random access performance. Um, and a, as a result, these existing engines that are built on top of Parquet, which includes like Iceberg and, and Delta and, and Hootie and so, forth, so on and so forth, um, they often just don't have these common AI uh, transformations that you need. And lastly, right, we've seen this explosion in storage technologies. Have you guys seen the recent um, S announcement by AWS on S3 Express? Have you guys seen it? Yeah. So I'm like super excited to try it, try it out. Um, there's some there's some um, uh, like arrow rust uh, issues integrating with that new API. But once that's done, I think what it's going to enable is for a lot of these like, um, like vector search uh, use cases and things like that, we can just store the data directly on S3 Express, and it's going to give us a lot better performance. Uh, but even without sort of these managed solutions, if, if you just look at storage like MVME, 
Um, IO bandwidth doubles every three years, roughly, right? So it's like the new Moore's law for storage. Um, and they've also got, become a lot faster. And when Parquet was designed, um, you know, cloud and object storage wasn't nearly as ubiquitous, right? So a lot of the assumptions are uh, essentially made for a much older generation of storage technology. So, um, you know, there's a recent paper by like some folks at uh, Tsinghua CMU and then um, Andy Pablo and Wes McKinney to look at sort of performance of Parquet and Oric in various environments, SSD and S3, for you know, representative machine learning workloads. So if you look at some of the timings on vector index search uh, for Parquet and for Oric, you're looking at like, you know, high number of seconds to like minutes of response times, which is kind of ridiculous. It, you're, you're not gonna be able to get um, interactive responses from them. So uh, really we need something new. Uh, if, you, if you know, um, if you've looked at the, the code bases for different implementations, there's a lot of baggage uh, and design debt that have accumulated over the years, um, and very fundamental changes are required. Um, and just if we were to modify the existing implementations, modifications require too much overhead, um, so development speed will be very slow. And on the other hand, migration is now super easy. So it used to be that it was very difficult to create a new um, uh, data format because you have to like integrate with every tool that's out there. But uh, Apache Arrow has become a standard, right? And so every like query engine data frame uh, framework now integrates with Apache Arrow. So for new formats, you just integrate with Apache Arrow and now migration is literally two lines of code, one to read into Arrow, one to write back into this new format. And also, it means you're not locked in. So if you want to try a new format, the reverse migration is also two lines of code. Right. Um, and, the, and the tensor formats that you have, like, uh, have you guys used like TF records or have at least have heard of TF records? Right, so um, they're also not very good. Uh, they're, they're, um, they're optimized for tensor storage and for training. But it turns out with AI, we still need OLAP type of queries, right? Because if you have like a large number of tensors or images, in, in order for you to do training, you also need to do filtering and you need to do sampling and things like that that these tensor formats are not very good at. Um, okay, so um, we know that, that Parquet and Oric are, are not very good at these new workloads. Um, and you know, it was, it, we've seen that it's not a, it would not be very conducive to actually try to modify their existing implementations. Um, and so that's why we built Lance. Uh, and Lance is essentially two things. One is it's a new columnar file format. Um, and so this is columnar storage with fast point queries. That's analogous to, to Parquet. Um, and then it's also a table format, kind of like a lightweight version of Iceberg or Hootie uh, or Delta that gives you lightweight transactions, uh, allows you to integrate secondary indices, um, and manage versioning and things and time travel on top of these uh, LANS files. All right. And so overall, um, LANS, the format is intended to be an open uh, data platform for you to build on, right? With, uh, it's a lot more than just vector search, um, and it's zero vendor lock-in. So, uh, on top of Lance, we built Lance CB, uh, the vector search uh, uh, vector database, which we'll talk about later. Um, but you can use it in model training to speed up your training data loaders uh, to keep your GPUs really well fed uh, and to make it much cheaper to manage uh, high uh, scale data, like multi terabyte to petabyte scale image data sets. And Lance is automatically integrated uh, into these analytical tools like DuckDB pandas, polars, and also Spark. Um, so one of the interesting things um, about performance, you know, we saw that, that performance chart earlier. So at the core um, of it, why random access matters is for filtering or for like indexing, like vector index or like a scalar index uh, on like B-tree or something like that. At the end of the day, you're filtering for, you're selecting um, some subset of your data, and then the uh, parts of your index will point to the correct rows in your data set, right? And they're, they're sort of spread out throughout that, um, your data set. So to access, and that's why the random access performance is actually really important. 
So um, let's take a short break and let's see what, let's see uh, sort of Lance format in action. So to, um, uh, I've got two identical data sets uh, set up. So one is a, um, a Lance uh, data set called pets. And this is essentially the Oxford pets data set. So there's a, and I've added a vector, um, the species metadata, and then the URL, and the actual like image binary itself. Um, and then uh, I've also created uh, the same data set uh, in Parquet, right? Uh, pyro, yeah, in, in Parquet. So uh, what I'm gonna do is you know, select a random row from both data sets, and we can just see it. So um, what I'm gonna do is just use uh, NumPy to generate a random index, right? And then so I'm gonna say PQ, the Parquet data set, I'm gonna take a randomly generated index, um, and this will just be one, sort of one, one index. All right, so it's going around a bunch of times, and we're gonna see that this is roughly 350 milliseconds or so, um, and this is only, whoops, uh, this is count rows, this is about 7,000 rows, right? So uh, when you scale up, that time also goes up, so it becomes uh, a lot slower at, at large scale. Now we can look at the same, th same thing, but instead of the, um, the, the Parquet data set, I'm gonna look at the, the Lance data set, and um, what that's gonna show you is, again, it's gonna run it a bunch of times, and then if it finishes, right? So you, you can see that it's about uh, 171 microseconds, right? So this is what, uh, about roughly 2,000 times faster to select out the data that you want. Um, and of course, you can, uh, you can use DuckDB for, uh, to query these, some of these data sets. Like, uh, I'm not gonna show the Parquet because that's, that's sort of similar. Uh, but for example, like I have my pets Lance data set. I can directly say, like, show me the URLs from pets where species equal dog and just give me 10 of them. And um, you could just use this in, in uh, SQL queries and other uh, SQL engines as well. And so uh, if we kind of go back to that paper with the benchmarks, if we put Lance next to Parquet and OROC, so this, the summary is in, um, uh, in different situations, Lance is at least one, or, or, uh, one, or two, one to two orders of magnitude faster than the faster of Parquet or work in, in these situations, right? And so, um, Today, I think Lance columnar format is used in a variety of different situations. So one is large scale data mining for autonomous vehicles. So you've got petabytes of image data set with deeply nested um, autonomous vehicle sensor data. And so you wanna, you wanna do things like, um, you know, describe a situation where the model was, uh, or the, your, your model and the car uh, applied the brakes when it shouldn't have, right? Um, and like finding, edge cases about your um, uh, vehicle that you know, may point to unsafe driving behavior or, or things like that. Um, number two is uh, generative AI. So a lot of AI native companies that uh, are multimodal uh, um, collect just vast amounts of um, you know, image data that are generated and they want to use that for training uh, or analytics or debugging. And so uh, Lance makes it a lot cheaper and a lot faster for them to do so. Uh, and the last bucket is you know, semantic search for you know, LLMs, uh, a recommender system. So this includes RAG um, and agents and things like that. Um, okay, so uh, let's, I'm gonna speed through this next section a little bit. Um, just to, to sort of whet the appetite on what makes Lance format actually different and how we're able to achieve these performance improvements um, in, a couple of, in a couple of slides. One is the data layout and the encoding. So in Parquet, 
uh, when you have like an array of strings, the layout is you know offset data, offset data. So in order to uh, retrieve you know one row out of your array, you have to read the whole row group, um, and and then uh, and then you can um, get that one particular row. Now, if you're storing integers, uh, reading a thousand integers isn't uh, that bad because uh, you, you have you're limited by like the minimum block sizes on the storage technology, anyways. But uh, if you're thinking about you know images or embeddings or um, you know point clouds that can get up to like hundreds of kilobytes to hundreds of megabytes per record, right? Then reading out a thousand or like the whole row group becomes prohibitively expensive. Uh, instead, with Lance, we actually separate the offsets and the data in the encoding so that you can. Uh, using the offsets, you can have constant access uh, into, uh, into that array, and you can amortize the offset read time. Uh, number two, um, the scanning and the I.O. execution is also very different for Lance from Parquet. So we use a technique called late materialization so that, uh, you know, on, so if you, let's say, if you look at the top right here, we're running a SQL query that selects out the ID, the timestamp, and let's say LiDAR cloud from a data set uh, given some filters, right? So the, the regular um, plan is you, you select out all the columns, you scan all the columns between the select and the where clauses, you run the filter, you run the limit, and then you return just the, the select columns, right? So the problem is um, here is that LiDAR cloud, that column presumably is very large. So what you're doing is you're reading out the whole really large column, and then you're filtering it, and you're essentially throwing away like you know most of that large column that you've read out, right? And so that can be uh, really slow. So instead, with Lance, the the scanner will only scan the um, the where clause columns, the pred uh, predicate columns first, and then at the very end, it does the take on the projection or the or the very large columns. So. This for, if you have columns that are large binary blobs, this is much faster. Um, and two, this is only possible uh, if, you, if you offer, if your format supports fast random access. Right. And then the third, the third thing is storage. So with M modern MVMEs and cloud object storage, you have a lot better uh, support for higher uh, parallelism and like very deep IO queues. So, uh, so what we want to do for a lot of these applications is to make your um, sort of IO scan process very shallow and very wide. So you can try to try to um, store uh, a lot of the metadata outside or an external uh, data structure. So you can cache a lot of that metadata, and then uh, to get the requisite data that you need for a particular query, just issue lots of parallel requests. Uh, and that'll that'll give a lot better performance as well. All right, um, and then the last thing I'll mention is versioning and time travel. So um, you, we all know that with Parquet, you can't actually uh, append to the existing Parquet files. They're designed to be they're immutable. Um, and so what we do with Lance is we uh, you can manage multiple Lance files in the Lance table format so that we automatically version your data for you. You can append or delete or you know, add and drop columns, um, and these are, uh, we automatically create new versions and you can time travel. So you can say th things like, you know, run this query on this data set as of the state of yesterday or the day before, so that um, in machine learning, if you want to do, uh, re reproduce, uh, reproduce your result from like, you know, the, a week ago when maybe your model gave some weird output or when you notice a problem, uh, this is essentially free. And then if you're, and the same thing with time travel uh, with, and restoration. So in production, a lot of times, um, if you find that your data pipeline messed up or something like that, in order to be able to go back in time um, and restore a previous state of the database is often an expensive operation. But um, with Lance, this is essentially free and instantaneous. Um, okay, we talked about the vector index. So uh, with the table format, it makes room for you to integrate secondary indices. So with the file itself, you can have these vector indices, you can have um, scalar indices for, for you know, string and numerical columns. And these indices tend to be, uh, these indices 
uh, can, can be fairly large. Um, and so this is why vector databases today are very expensive, because everything has to be stored in memory. So if you have a lot of data, it's not very scalable, and you have to separate it out and, and worry about sharding. Um, that gets your um, architecture very complicated. Whereas with LANs, everything is disk-based, so that we can separate compute from storage, and that allows us to scale up really well. Right? Um, and so that's, that's sort of the basis for the first product that we made on top of this format, which is a, a LAN CB, a vector database for AI retrieval. Um, and, so, and not only is it um, uh, really scalable, it's very cost effective. Um, it runs in process, so it's kind of like SQLite or DuckDB. You don't have to uh, worry about like, connecting to a server or operations, um, and it's super flexible. So um, I'm so going to take a really quick look here at um, a demo that I've set up with a uh, LAN CB table. So now if I'm just going to connect to a local um, directory that has some LAN CB tables in it. And so this is the Oxford Pets data set. So essentially it's a, um, I got here. So it's basically like a bunch of images of like cute cats and dogs. Um, and we're going to search through them. So with, with LANCB, you can actually um, s use a embedding registry to abstract away all the embedding mumbo jumbo. So you can just say, hey, I'm, I'm going to use open clip for this table. And then you can use Pydantic to make it easy to declare the data model for your retrieval. So here, this pets table has three columns, vector, species, and URL. Um, I'm not going to bother to re-embed everything, but you can, but we're going to just open the table. And so what you can do is say like table.search and you can just put in a, a text uh, and then you can convert that to pets, uh, to the pedantic model, and then you can show it, show the image. All right, so this is pretty easy and I'm now done like multimodal semantic search retrieval uh, with just a couple lines of code and without having to really worry about the embedding generation process myself at all. Um, and what's interesting about LANCB2 is uh, because it's multi multimodal, you can actually directly um, a search using an image. So I've got this query image locally of some baby Samoyeds, and I can say, hey, feed this query image directly into the search process. And I've got this, you know, that uh, dog that you know, is essentially another Samoyed here. Now what's interesting too is I can also do filters. So something like, um, you know, I, I can say something like where species equals cat. So I'm going to search for images that look like this, um, but is actually just a cat. Um, and so the, this kind of makes sense, right? So I'm searching for like fluffy and white uh, features, right? And so the, it gives me this cat that makes sense. Okay. Um, and then let's say to, just to go out. Uh, continue on this. Let's say like I make a mistake, right? I delete all the cat pictures from this data set, and now I end up with only dogs. And, and then I realize, oh, I messed up. Actually, I, I, I want to undo that. So I can say restore my table to the to the previous version. Um, and you know, instantaneously, I didn't have to do anything, right? Uh, I can get my cats and dogs uh, back. All right. Um, and the last thing I mentioned was uh, scale, right? Because of the um, the disk space index and the columnar format. So what it enables us to do is serve really large data sets using like not that much compute. So I've got this table called test1b, right? And so if you can't, yeah, it's hard to count, but it's, you know, if you count it, there's nine zeros. So it's one billion vectors on this table. This is running on my laptop. There's no like cloud magic happening behind the scenes, right? And so if I run, let's say like I run a, a time it on, I'm going to feed in like, um, random search vectors and get it. So this is allowing me to, on my laptop to search through a billion embeddings in like just a couple of milliseconds. All right, so this is the power of just better storage and better lower level data infrastructure. Um, cool, all right. And then basically there's, um, I've had a lot of fun working on this um, and there's lots of very exciting things to, to come. So I think null support, um, sparse vectors, that's going to be useful for like bio, biomedical, healthcare, um, and then adding in like full text stuff. 
um, advanced file encodings, data compression, and just like more native level uh, ecosystem integrations to all the tools that you're familiar with from like Spark to Ray to um, Polars and beyond, right? Um, if you're building generative AI applications uh, or you're managing just multimodal data at scale, please check us out. And so we've got Lance Format, which is uh, LanceDB slash Lance. The vector, open source vector database is LanceDB. And if you're looking for like tutorials, uh, VectorDB-Recipes has more than a dozen worked out examples, both in Python and also in, in, um, uh, in TypeScript. So yeah, and it, um, got a couple of minutes left for questions. Usually as a speaker, I try to time it so I run out of time exactly and not have time for questions, but I think I messed up today. So we got to like roughly two minutes if anybody has questions. Talk. But my question is that um, is the NAS format is a prerequisite to use NASDB? Yes. You have to use, I mean, every record has to be in that format. Yeah, but uh, when you use LANCDB, the, like the uh, data storage is taken care of for you. You can, you can, you can insert data into LANCDB in whatever format that you want. And we convert so it. It does the, the transformation yeah. internally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can, like, if you have a pandas data frame, polars data frame, arrow table, or just like a bunch of Python ticks or whatnot, yeah, okay. you can just shove them in the database. Okay, another question I want to is that there are multiple formats, different type of vector databases. I do not believe anytime there's a one fits all. I'm curious that what are the major cases that NASDB is not the right choice? Yeah, so for example, like let's say you have um, really small scale, like you know, tens of thousands of vectors, your data, is or, your data already lives in Postgres, um, and you have sort of, you don't have needs for like advanced retrieval uh, on top of like simple vector search. Then I would say, you know, if you're, if you're already built the expertise around Postgres, then you can just stay in Postgres and you don't, you don't need high scale or you don't need the advanced retrieval features, then just stay there, right? Um, uh, for, and generally like for, uh, or something like today, if you want a cloud hosted solution that is, um, that is like SOC 2 compliant and HIPAA compliant and you, know, you can't wait three months for us to, to get there, then you know, some, like another solution is probably the right choice right now, right? So I think those are, those are generally the situations where I think LANCB is probably not the right choice. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 